Hi, my name is Dave, and this is a brief introduction to hedge accounting. The purpose of this video isn't to go through the requirements of hedge accounting in great detail. Actually, we won't go through it at all. Rather, the purpose of this video is to provide an overview of what hedging is, the main categories of hedge accounting, and key changes to IFRS 9 in relation to hedge accounting. Most organizations are subject to financial risks that may impact on the profit or loss their business generates. These risks include interest rate risk, foreign exchange risk, and commodity price risk. Hedging is simply a risk management activity used by organizations to mitigate their exposure to these and to other risks. An example of this would be an Australian-based retailer who has ordered 5 million euro of inventory from an overseas supplier. Note that the price of the purchase is denominated in a foreign currency, in this case euros. The concern for the entity is that between placing the order and paying for the inventory, the Aussie dollar weakens against the euro and the inventory ends up costing more. To manage this, there are a number of things a company could do. It could simply pay for the inventory now, or it could exchange Aussie dollars for euros and then hold them until payment is required. More likely, however, is that it would use a derivative of some sort, like a forward rate agreement or an option, to mitigate the foreign exchange risk. An important thing to note in relation to hedging is that it doesn't mean an entity will be better off than if it hadn't hedged. What hedging does is reduce, and possibly eliminate, uncertainty. This is best explained by expanding on with the example I just gave. Easy Bits Industries orders 5 million euro worth of goods from an overseas supplier. At the time of the order, the Aussie dollar euro exchange rate is 0.64 so the company expects to pay $7,812,500. Concerned that the Aussie will weaken against the euro between the date of the order and the expected date of payment, EasyBits exchanges $7,812,500 and receives 5 million euro in order to hedge its exposure to changes in the foreign exchange rate. The entry for this would be debit cash foreign exchange $7,812,500 and credit cash, $7,812,500. At the time of the payment, the Aussie dollar has strengthened so that the Aussie dollar euro rate is 0.65. This means the 5 million euro amount is equivalent to $7,692,308. As such, a loss is recognized on the foreign exchange cash holding as per ASB 121. The entry for this is debit loss in the P&L 120,192, credit cash foreign exchange 120,192. The goods, while still costing 5 million euro, now are only worth the equivalent of 7,692,308. So the entry is debit inventory 7,692,308 and credit cash foreign exchange 7,692,308. So whilst the Aussie dollar actually strengthened and the inventory is recognized on the balance sheet at $7,692,308, it effectively costs the business $7,812,500. On the flip side, if EasyBits had done nothing, the only entry would have been the entry for the purchase of the inventory, debit inventory $7,692,308, credit cash $7,692,308. The inventory in this instance only cost EasyBits $7,692,308. In hindsight, it's easy to see that EasyBits shouldn't hedge in this case, and we probably should have picked easier numbers. But as they say, hindsight is a wonderful thing. However, what hedging did was create certainty about the amount EasyBits would pay for its inventory. Now that we've introduced hedging, time to look at hedge accounting. Hedge accounting occurs when an entity designates a hedging relationship between a hedging instrument and hedged item. A quick note on terminology. An eligible hedged item must be a contract with an external party and can be one of four things. A recognized asset or liability, an unrecognized firm commitment, that is a binding agreement with a specific quantity, price and date or dates, a highly probable forecast transaction, or a net investment in a foreign operation. An eligible hedging instrument is either a derivative with certain requirements 
or a non-derivative financial asset or liability. There are three types of hedging relationships, fair value, cash flow, and a hedge of a net investment in foreign operation. The first two are what we'll focus on here, whilst the third is not covered in this unit. A fair value hedge is the hedge of the exposure to the changes in the fair value of a recognized asset or liability, or in the value of an unrecognized firm commitment that could impact on an entity's profit or loss. For example, if I'm an Australian-based entity and I currently owe £100,000, this is a recognized liability. If I use a hedging instrument to mitigate my exposure to the changes in the fair value of the £100,000, this would be a fair value hedge. Cash flow hedges are hedges to the exposure to the variability in future cash flows of an asset or liability, or a highly probable forecast transaction that could ultimately impact an entity's profit or loss. A hedge of the FX risk of a firm commitment can also be accounted for as a cash flow hedge. Continuing with the previous example, if we assume I'm paying a fixed rate of 5% per annum on the £100,000 borrowing, that means I'm paying £5,000 per year to service the debt. The risk here is that I have an exposure in relation to foreign exchange movements affecting the cash flows of that liability. If I use a hedging instrument to mitigate my exposure to foreign exchange movements affecting the Aussie dollar value of my interest payments, this would be a cash flow hedge. In this final section, we'll quickly cast our eye over some of the main changes that IFRS 9 will mean to hedge accounting. IFRS 9 was issued by the IASB in July 2014, with the new standard coming into effect on the 1st of January 2018. One reason for the new requirements was based on feedback the IASB was receiving that IAS 39 did not allow entities to adequately reflect their risk management practices. An example includes IAS 39 not allowing hedge accounting to be applied to groups of items. There have been a number of major changes from IAS 39 to IFRS 9 relating to hedging, and these include a change in hedge effectiveness testing. This is now prospective only and can be qualitative depending on the complexity of the hedge. Groups of items can be a hedged item. There are more possibilities now for groups of items to be designated as the hedged item and increased disclosures. And that ends this video on an introduction to hedging. For those interested in the details of fair value and cash flow hedges, there is another video looking at work example 9.1.